I know that my Redeemer lives. I got it. I know that my Redeemer lives. Crooked places straight, the rough places plain, every valley, exalted mountains and hills are made low. I know because it's right here in my heart.
Jesus Christ, who sits in Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Yes, Jesus Christ is Lord. Is he Lord of your life is the question. Is he Lord of your life? Is Jesus Christ Lord of your life? Let me hear you. Amen, amen, amen. Yes, we had a marvelous study this, this morning on the triumphal entry of Christ into Jerusalem, and I hope he's had a triumphal entry, entry into your hearts and into your lives, and that he sits on the throne of your life. I greet you this morning in that precious name of Jesus, that name that's above every name. So I say welcome to you all that has come out, that's here gathered in the sanctuary, and to you all that is online, live streaming or conference call. We welcome you this morning here in this house of praise as we prepare our hearts and our minds to come together and give God some praise. So we just want to say thank you. We, um, this month is April. Um, Mr. Jones will say more about it, but this is Pastor's anniversary month. So let's make sure we be prepared to, um, to share, to share our love and appreciation uh, uh, for him, okay? You know, and it, even in his absence when he gets back. Okay, so let us prepare now to, to praise the Lord. We have our quartet here this morning. Oh, yeah, look at him. Look at them. They're going to lift us up in song to get our hearts ready. They're going to be like David, you know, prepare the heart for the word. So we, hey, hey, drummer man, how, how you doing back there? So, so let us go forth and, um, and praise and continue to praise God here this morning. Good morning. Maybe please stand and join in our congregational hymn, Never Alone.
Good morning, Tacoma. How many of you are standing on that promise that the choir just sung about, that he will never leave you alone? As a matter of fact, he is Emmanuel, God with us, and it's just amazing how even through any trial and tribulation that we're going through this week, that he will never leave us alone. Let's praise the Lord for that. Amen. Amen. The call to worship this morning is taken from Psalm 100, and I am going to read all five verses of that in case you wanted to read along. And it reads as follows. Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come into his presence with singing. Know that the Lord is God. It is he that made us, and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him, bless his name. For the Lord is good, his steadfast love endures forever and his faithfulness to all generations. May the Lord add a special blessing to the reading, the hearing, and the doing of his word and let us bow our heads for a word of prayer. Gracious, almighty, omnipotent God, the one who is the good shepherd, who leads us to greener pastures. We are just so thankful to be in your presence this morning, Lord, to be confidently before your throne of grace, because you gave us that blessed assurance 2,000 years ago. When you show the greatest act of love, the one who lays down his life for his friends. Where you gave us that testament of love in which you died a substitutionary atonement and propitiation for our sins. Lord, we just want to take this time to acknowledge you and adore you, Lord. For Lord, it's, you are the center of our joy and the joy of the Lord is our strength. So, Lord, we are leaning on this strength right now. And we just ask, Lord, that uh, as we come to worship you and celebrate you, because this is a celebration of you, that you attune our hearts to your heart, Lord, so that we can worship in spirit and in truth. Gracious Almighty God, there may be some things that are heavy on our hearts right now, that may keep us from worshiping you with all that is within us. We ask, Lord, that you remove those, that you purge those, Lords. If there's any sin that's kind of burdening us right now that is weighing down on us, Lord, please remind us of the reason of why we have, are here, Lord. It is because of your grace and mercy that has brought us through, Lord. It's because of the blood that gives us strength from day to day that will never lose its power, Lord, that we're able to even be here before your throne of grace. So, gracious almighty God, we just ask during this celebration of you that you make your presence known, that your Holy Spirit permeates this place, that everywhere, Lord, the manifestation of your spirit is shown through the ushers, through the choir, through the one delivering the word this morning, Lord, we ask that you fill her afresh so that she may preach with your Holy Spirit authority. And Lord, help our vessels to be empty of ourselves so that it can be filled afresh and anew with your word, Lord. And we just ask, Lord, that at the benediction that uh, we're not merely dismissed, but we are launched to continue to worship you and continue to go throughout our communities to tell the world that Jesus loves them. We ask in the precious and matchless name of Jesus all these blessings. Amen.
I greet you again in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. It is such a blessing to be in this particular house of Zion, worshiping with my brothers and sisters in Christ. Uh, it's so wonderful to see all of you here, and let us take a time to take a look around and to look at our brothers and sisters in Christ and wave them and tell them that you love them with your eyes and your hands. And also, those of you who are listening and watching, we are also waving at you and we are blessed that you, we know that you are worshiping with us this morning. Amen. Amen. We have, uh, before I go on with the announcements, I would just like to ask um, if there are any visitors here. Um, I look in the congregation, I don't see any faces that are unfamiliar to me, praise the Lord, and uh, um, maybe later in the service we may have a few guests. But I would like to um, take this time to highlight a few announcements. Um, first of all, um, you may notice a flyer um, in your bulletin that uh, is says the Capital Area Food Bank at the top. And this is a wonderful volunteer opportunity sponsored by the Men's uh, Ministry. It's an outreach event um, that's gonna take place on May 18th at 9 a.m. to noon. Um, and they're leaving the church at 8.15 a.m. So uh, um, stay tuned for um, more updates and information about that as that date gets closer. Also at the back of your bulletin is just the announcement of what was announced last week that the pastor, our pastor is on sabbatical, praise the Lord. And he is able to, um, we're gonna continue to pray that he's able to rest and um, replenish and revitalize himself so he can come back even stronger um, as the under shepherd of this church, amen? amen. Um, also it has a list of those people who will be um, delivering um, the message. Uh, if you have not seen already, our, we have another Samson in the house. Um, praise the Lord. Uh, we have our own Reverend Yolanda Samson that's going to be delivering the message here, and she definitely doesn't need any introduction. Um, she was a blessed minister here, and she's um, blessing those people at First Church as well right now. Amen. Um, also, it is the pastor's 18th um, anniversary, and um, this uh, month that marks this, we would like to just take this time to ask you to make sure you express your appreciation to um, the pastor and the first lady um, about how much we appreciate their ministry here at the church. Um, let's just, even though he's not here, let's give the Lord a praise for um, our pastor's 18 years of ministry here. Just praise the Lord for wonderful spiritual guidance that he has given over us over the 18 years, and I'm sure that we will continue to express that even through the month of May when he returns. Also, um, one last announcement that I would like to highlight. Um, those of you who are registered to see uh, uh, Daniel, um, the final payment um, will probably be due on the second Sunday of May. Um, so, um, the total cost is $165, so those of you who have paid $50, um, you could do the math and you only have $115 um, dollars to go. Those of you who would like to come on board, we have a few seats left, um, and the trip is going to be on um, Black Friday this November after Thanksgiving, so there's still a little time and there's still a few seats left. Let me know and we'll make sure that we reserve a seat with you. Um, for you, I mean. At this time, we're going to turn the service back over to our wonderful um, music ministry.
Let the church say amen. We all know that he's worthy to be praised. Amen. And this brings us to one of the most powerful and potent parts of the worship service when the saints of God come together in prayer. And um, as we do that and as we begin to center ourselves, I would like to bring your attention to uh, the prayer list that's in the bulletin so that they can be on our minds and hearts as we pray. Um, some of the people under nursing care, some of the people who have continuing health and wellness needs, and also as well as our um, ministry focus that we want to lift up in prayer. So um, as we um, prepare, um, you may assume the posture that you would uh, uh, like. You may sit at your where you are right now. You may stand up. You may come to the altar. You may even kneel. But we ask that you um, do this at this time. take a moment to center ourselves and focus on the audience of one being more aware of him and less aware of our surroundings or the people around us before your throne of grace. We come boldly, Lord, because we know that we are yours. We have the honor of being children of God. And Lord, we are just so thankful and our hearts are filled with gratitude that we can be called your children, your servant. You have called us friend. You, call, you have called us heirs of a royal priesthood, Lord. And that is honor was not given to us by any merit of our own, Lord. This honor was given to us by way of you coming down to us and being with us, by you becoming acquainted with grief, by you being bruised for our iniquity, Lord. That is why we can be counted as righteous because of the wonderful sacrifice that you have made and for the price for our grace. And we are just so right now grateful that we know that you are with us. So we just take this time to adore you, Lord, to acknowledge you for who you are, what you have done, what you are doing, and what you will do. Gracious Almighty God, we, the future is uncertain to us, Lord, but we rest in the blessed assurance that the future is in your hands. And we know that all things work together for the good of those who love the Lord, who are called according to your purpose. So grace almighty God, we know, Lord, that there is nothing that can separate us from your love. So we go, Lord, with these full hearts as we just ask, Lord, that any time we have fallen short of your glory, and we know that we do, we just ask your forgiveness, Lord. Lord, uh, there's many times when we have sought other things instead of seeking you. We just ask, Lord, that uh, in those times, when those times of temptation comes up, Lord, that we reach out to you and not reach out to other unsatisfying sources. We ask, Lord, that... Uh, you continue uh, to remember that uh, you have the only detergent that can wipe out sin. You are the only thing that can make us clean and white as wool. So, Lord, we just ask that we come to you, Lord, whenever we feel inadequate, whenever we feel short, whenever we feel that the tasks before us are greater than us. Gently remind us, Lord, that greater is he 
that is in us than he that is of the world. And we just ask, Lord, that we focus on the normative view and how the issues and the iniquity we face is small in comparison to your, to you, Lord. So, at, Lord, we just ask that uh, as we prepare to make our concerns known to you, that we do so with a heart of thanksgiving. So we like, Lord, at this time, for you to listen as your saints give their personal expressions of thanksgiving. thank you enough there is not enough time to thank you for everything that you have continued to do for us Lord where you have opened doors we have not seen where you protect us from all kinds of near misses that we are unaware of Lord we are just thankful Lord for the many times you have directed us away from potholes Lord before we were we, before we stepped into them Lord we just Thank you, Lord, and we give you all the praise, Lord, and it's with this heart of gratitude, Lord, that we make our petitions known to you, and Lord, we just ask, first of all, that you be with the first family of this church, that you put your hedge of protection around them, Lord, that you encamp your angels around them, Lord, so that they will continue to be able to grow closer and closer to you. And as they draw closer to um, their family and friends, we ask, Lord, that you strengthen and revitalize him and regenerate him so he can continue to do your work, Lord, and continue to be our shepherd, Lord, that leads us closer and closer to you, Lord. We just ask, Lord, that you be with some of the uh, people listed in our bulletin and some of those that aren't listed, Lord. Some people that uh, sometimes feel forgotten about, Lord, that maybe have escaped our memories, Lord, where there are people who feel isolated, Lord. We ask that you comfort them, Lord, and remind them, Lord, that you are always with them. There are people who have lost their father, Lord. We just ask, Lord, to remind them that you are their heavenly father, Lord, and that they can always count on you, Lord. We just ask, Lord, that you be with all those people who may be suffering because uh, they lost a loved one. Whether it was recent or whether it was several years ago, Lord, we know that this is a long journey. We just ask, Lord, that you continue to walk closely with them on this journey, Lord. That you continue to comfort him long after the sympathy cards have stopped coming. We just ask, Lord, that you continue to bless all those who are in harm's way and Israel and Gaza and other places in the Middle East, Lord, where there is unrest. We ask, Lord, that you bring peace into the hearts of those leaders. Help them to make decisions wisely, Lord. Help our own um, leaders in the United States to make wise decisions, Lord. But Lord, we also ask that the leaders of the church, the pastors from all over the world that are leading several gatherings, Lord, in branches of Zion, that you bless them, Lord, and that you lead them to lead their congregation in a way that pleases you. Help their hearts to be attuned to your hearts so that your ways will also be their ways. We ask, Lord, that you continue to bless the speaker who you have assigned to speak this morning. Give her strength. Give her power, Lord, Holy Spirit power, that she's able to preach with authority and clarity, Lord. And we just ask, Lord, that you be with us, that we are ready to receive your word. Whether it pricks our heart, whether it lifts us up or inspires us, Lord, help the word to have a lasting effect. Help it not to be a seed that falls on hard ground, Lord, but the seed that falls on good soil so that it may grow 
and so that it will multiply in many times its original size. And Lord, we just ask all of these blessings in the precious and matchless name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Let the church say amen, and as I mentioned before, um, before the uh, um, choir comes and blesses us, I, I can call you guys a choir, right? Amen. Praise God. <laughs> I see quartet, but I want to call you a choir. Praise the Lord. Um, I just wanted to um, reiterate again and um, introduce and present to some um, the Reverend Yolanda Sampson, who will be delivering the message. Most of you know her, and uh, just in case, uh, did you know that there are two people who are sitting proudly in the second pew that are related to her that are just probably proud of it. Look, this is a, uh, uh, she's uh, um, Erling Sampson's mom, um, uh, mother, daughter, and that's her big brother right there. And so we are just proud to um, have her come back. And she was uh, my um, predecessor, my sister in Christ. So we're just very, very happy. We're in for a treat. We are, um, um, she is a dedicated uh, woman of the Lord, and she's a servant of God, and she's everything she does, she puts her heart into it. So um, bef after the choir, the next voice you will hear is that of um, Reverend Yolanda Sampson. <laughs> Because 
ask me how I know he lives. You ask me how I know he lives. You ask me how I know he lives. So glad I know because he's right here in my heart. My heart. You ask me how I know he lives. You ask me how I know he lives. Hallelujah. Come on, let's put our hands together and give Jesus the Christ the praise. Hallelujah. Do you know that your Redeemer lives? Hallelujah, Jesus. Come on, lift up your heads, O ye gates, and be lifted up, ye everlasting doors, because the King of glory is here. Who is the King of glory? The Lord strong and mighty, the Lord mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, O ye gates, and be lifted up, ye everlasting doors. The King of glory is here. Our Redeemer lives. Come on, if you know our Redeemer lives, come on and put your hands together and give Jesus Christ the praise. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Glory to God. Hallelujah. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Glory to the Most High God. To Pastor and Mrs. Trice in their absence, to Deacon Harvey James, and, and to all of my family here at Tacoma Park Baptist Church, we like to say good morning to you. <laughs> And it is a blessing to, to have here today uh, with us um, our beloved mother, uh, the first Bible we ever read, Earlene Sampson. <laughs> and to our older brother, Michael Sampson, who was inducted in Carroll High School's High School uh, Basketball Hall of Fame on yesterday. <laughs> we celebrate the God in him. Not only a Hall of Famer on the basketball court, but as a big brother. And so we thank God for him in Jesus' name. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Well, there is a word from the Lord uh, on this morning. Hallelujah. And the Lord is saying, don't count me out. <laughs> hey. Hey, the, this wonderful quartet just finished being used by the Lord that says, our Redeemer lives. And it's because he lives that you just don't count me out. Okay. <laughs> amen. Amen. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, and we just thank you that you are the King of kings and Lord of lords, and there's no one like you in all the earth and beyond, and we just want to say thank you. We thank you for another day of life, another day of breath, another day of strength, and we thank you, Lord God, that you love us so much, Lord God, that you sent a word for us all on this morning. Don't count me out. And, Lord God, as we deliver this word, Lord God, we just pray, Lord God, that you would sanctify our hearts, Lord God, purify it with the precious blood of Jesus. If there's any iniquity of sin in our hearts, Lord God, please forgive us. If we hide iniquity in our heart, Lord God, you won't hear our prayers, Lord God. And we need you. We need you every hour. We need you right now, Lord God, in the name of Jesus the Christ. So, Lord God, we just pray that you would have mercy upon us, Lord God. Help me to decrease as you increase. Pour your words in my mouth, Lord God, that, Father God, that everything, Lord God, that is spoken and revealed, Lord God, it comes directly from you through these lips of clay. And we're careful, God, to give you all the honor, glory, and praise. In Jesus' mighty name, we do pray. Amen and amen. Come on, let's put our hands together and give Jesus praise. Don't count me out. Everyone say, don't count me out. Don't count me out. Look at your neighbor and say, don't count me out. <laughs> when you count someone out, you decide that someone or something cannot succeed. Cinderella, you'll always be a servant girl. 
You won't have an opportunity to improve your life. You won't have an opportunity to marry the prince and become a princess. Don't count me out. You're an ugly duckling. You always look ugly. You'll never be accepted by family and friends. You'll always be teased, and you'll never become that beautiful swan. Don't count me out. In our passage of scripture today, coming out of 1 Samuel chapter 16, uh, verses 1 through 13, we see that the shepherd boy David was counted out. We'll begin our reading at verse number 1. 1 Samuel chapter 16, verses 1 through 13. And we ask, if you can, to please stand for the reading of God's word. Amen. The Lord Samuel, the Lord said to Samuel, How long will you mourn for Saul, since I have rejected him king over Israel? Fill your horn with oil and be on your way. I'm sending you to Jesse of Bethlehem. I have chosen one of his sons to be king. But Samuel said, how can I go? If Saul hears about it, he'll kill me. The Lord said, take a heifer with you. And I say, come, I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. Invite Jesse to sacrifice and I will show you what to do. You are to anoint for me the one I indicate. Samuel did what the Lord said. When he arrived at Bethlehem, the elders of a town trembled when they met him. They asked, do you come in peace? Samuel replied, yes, in peace. I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. Consecrate yourselves and come to the sacrifice with me. Then he consecrated Jesse and his sons and invited them to sacrifice. When they arrived, Samuel saw Eliab and said, surely, The Lord's anointed is here before the Lord. But the Lord said to Samuel, do not consider his appearance or his height, for I have rejected him. The Lord does not look at things the way that people look at. People look at the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. Then Jesse called Abinadab and had him to pass in front of Samuel. But Samuel said, the Lord has not chosen this one either. Jesse then had said, had Shammah passed by, but Samuel said, nor has the Lord chosen this one. Jesse had seven of his sons pass before Samuel, but Samuel said, are all the sons you have? There is still a youngest, Jesse answered. He is tending sheep. Samuel said, send him, for we will not sit down until he arrives. So he sent him and had brought him in. He was glowing with health and had a fine appearance and handsome features. The Lord said, rise and anoint him. This is the one. So Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the presence of his brothers. And from that day on, the spirit of the Lord came powerfully upon David. Samuel then went to Ramah. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Don't count me out. Everyone say, don't count me out. (laughs) Well, here in 1 Samuel chapter 16, we find ourselves at the place where the Lord had rejected King Saul as king. Why? Because King Saul, he was full of pride. He did what he wanted to do. He sacrificed uh, when he was supposed to wait for the priest to make the sacrifice before the war in 1 Samuel chapter 13. He was full of rebellion. He did exactly what he wanted to do. Rebellion's the sin of witchcraft. He, he dealt with adultery. He was more concerned about what the people thought instead of what God thought. He was full of deception. When God called him out on the carpet and said, I, I, I hear some animals roaring around, And he said, well, the people forced me to do it. He was operating in all the evil ways. And because he was full of pride, rebellion, adultery, deception, and evil doings, God had rejected him as king. The priest Samuel had the duty of anointing a brand new king. But it wasn't easy for him because Samuel had a relationship with King Saul. Don't you know that 
We can't force anybody to make a decision to follow the Lord. Everybody is responsible for their own decision to follow the Lord. So if you're not going to follow the Lord and the Lord has called me to tell you that you are no longer anointed as king and that I have to anoint a new king, then so be it. I have to obey God and not men. I can't be so earthly attached to somebody that it prohibits me from doing what God has called me to do, what God has called you to do. King Saul was rejected as king. And then now it was time for Samuel to anoint a new king. Number one. When God calls you in, others may count you out. <laughs> First Samuel chapter 16, 5 through 7a, Samuel replied, Yes, in peace I have come to sacrifice from the Lord. Consecrate yourselves. Come to the sacrifice with me. Then he consecrated Jesse and his sons and invited them to the sacrifice. When they arrived, Samuel saw Elab, and he said, Surely the Lord's anointed is here before the Lord. But the Lord said to Samuel, Do not consider his appearance nor his height, for I have rejected him. Well, where was David? David's father, Jesse, didn't even invite David to the sacrifice. He was out there tending sheep. He wasn't even a consideration. The priest and prophet Samuel saw Elibeth, and he said, surely the Lord's anointing stands here. Surely that Eliab, he's going to be the next king. Surely. How did Samuel know? Surely. Yes, Eliab, he was the firstborn. Yes, he was the model of a king, Saul. But surely Samuel prayed and asked God whether Eliab did Samuel pray and ask God whether Eliab was God's anointed to be the next king? How many times do we make decisions with asking God with what he wants? We consider the outward appearance, but don't even go before God to see what their heart is. Samuel counted Eliab on base of his, number one, his appearance, on a base of his accolades, Based on his association as the first son, Samuel was ready to count in Eliab, but God had counted him out. Who have you counted in that God has counted out? Single people, who have you met that is eye candy? Huh, he got it going on, she got it going on. <laughs> Hallelujah, Jesus. They have all the pedigrees. They, they come from a quote-unquote good family. They serve in the church. But have we gone before the Lord to see whether that is the right mate for you? That is the right mate for me. What are we, what are we saying, counting in that God has counted out? Have we, have we looked at the job, this job? Oh, it's the perfect job. It's paying me six, seven figures, and I'll be able to jet set. I'll be able to buy the house and buy the car. But have we gone before the Lord and asked him, Lord, is this your assignment? Lord, is this a place that you would have me? Lord, is this a place that, I, that you have anointed me to be at? Who have we counted in or what have we counted in but God has counted out? When God calls you in, others may count you out. Number two, when God counts you in, he will reveal your heart. <laughs> Glory to the most high God. Man looks at the outward appearance, but God looks on the heart. And see, the Lord shared with Samuel in 1 Samuel um, chapter 16, verses 7 through 13. He shared with Samuel that he had rejected Eliab. Because of his heart, which can be seen in Israel's battle with Goliath. 1 Samuel chapter 17, I'll read verses 10 and 11, then verse 13, and then 28 through 29 out of the easy to read version. Hear the word of the Lord. The Philistine also said, Today I stand and make fun of the army of Israel. I dare you to send me one of your men and let us fight. Saul and the Israelite soldiers heard what Goliath said, and they were very afraid. 
Verse 13, Jesse, three oldest sons, went to Saul with war. The first son was Eliab, the second one was Abendab, and the third one was Shammah. Verse 28, David's oldest brother, Eliab, heard King David talking with the soldiers, heard David talking with the soldiers and became very angry. Eliab asked David, why did you come down here? Who did you leave those few sheep with in the desert? I know why you came down here. You didn't want to do what you were told to do. You just wanted to come down here to watch the battle. David said, what did I do now? I didn't do anything wrong. I was only talking. See, in 1 Samuel chapter 17, we see the heart of Eliab. On the outward appearance, he seemed like, okay, this is the natural choice. But through circumstances and trials, we see that Eliab had, number one, he had an ego. The second letter of his name is L. He had a little mind, limited thinking. He went upon what he saw. The third letter of his name is I. He was insecure. Why is he so concerned about David talking to the soldiers? He wasn't talking to the soldiers. A, he was afraid. He had a spirit of fear in operation because he didn't go up against Goliath. What, 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 what's going on here? And B, he was bossy. Who wants a leader that is battling in a spirit that has an ego, prideful, that has a little mind, limited, that has no godly vision, one that's insecure, always worried about, is somebody going to take my position, this person going to take my position, one that is afraid, fearful to do what thus says the Lord, afraid to walk on that water, afraid to uh, go into the land that God had promised. Who wants a bossy leader? Come on. God saw Eliab's heart. Man looked at the outward appearance, but God saw the heart. God soon saw what kinds of leader that he would be. But on the other, and Eliab and Abinadab and Shama that all walked across Samuel's way, they were battling a spirit of fear, and God knew that this was not his chosen vessel. This was not the person that God had chosen to be king over all Israel. But on the other hand, David had a heart for God. As seen in the same battle with the Philistines, he operated in faith in God and not fear of men. David's conversation with King Saul in 1 Samuel chapter 17, 37 and 40. David, moreover, the Lord that delivered me out of the paw of the lion, the paw of the bear, he will deliver me out of the hand of this Philistine. And David said unto the Lord, Go, the Lord be with me. And Saul armed him with the armor and put on a helmet of brass on his head. He also armed him with the coat of the mail. And David coined his seer with armor. He essayed to go, for he had not proved it. And David said unto Saul, I cannot go with these, for I have not proved them. Hallelujah. And David put them off. And he took the staff in his hand and chose him five smooth stones out of the brook and put them in the shepherd's bag and he had even a script even a sling in his hand and he drew near the Philistine he went to battle he had the authorization of King Saul to go into the battle because he was going to to the battle in faith and this is what David said to Goliath first Samuel chapter 17 verse 45. And David said to the Cilicine, thou comest to me with a sword and a spear and with a shield, but I come in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, who thou hast defied. He went to the battle and he went boldly to the battle. He went up against the enemy. He didn't operate in a spirit of fear. He went full fledged knowing that God was with him. And this is what he had in 1 Samuel chapter 17 verses 49 through 50. And David put his hand in the bag and took hence the stone and slang it and smote the Philistine in his forehead. That stone sunk into the forehead and he fell upon the face of the earth. So David prevailed over the Philistine with a sling and with a stone and smote the Philistine and slew him. But there was no sword in the hand of David. He came in the name of the Lord. Glory to the most high God. See, when God counts you in, he'll show you the heart. 
He'll show you the heart without going through a whole lot of drama to see somebody's out. If we ask God before the battle, he'll show us exactly what's in somebody's heart. Before we hire somebody, he will show us what's in their heart. Before we marry him, somebody, he'll show us what's in their heart. But God wants us to ask, to seek, and to knock, and he'll show us exactly the way. Come on and put your hands together and give Jesus praise. Don't count me out. When God counts you in, don't pout about going about the roundabout. 1 Samuel chapter 16, verses 11 and 12a, the word of God records, and he asked Jesse, are all these your sons you have? There is still the youngest, Jesse answered. He is tending the sheep. Samuel said, send for him, for we will not sit down until he arrives. So he sent for him and brought him in. He was glowing with health and had a fine appearance and handsome features. See, it would have been easy for David to grumble and complain. Man, why are you calling me now? You didn't call me in the first place to the sacrifice. Why are you calling me now? And have an attitude with him because he didn't call him in the first place. And sometimes we can get an attitude because somebody didn't do something in the beginning. We develop a spirit of offense and that, that, that hinders us from moving into the next of God. But David was quiet. He received the blessing and the promotion that God had given him. It wasn't all that backbiting. It wasn't all that complaining and grumbling. That's why David was a man after God's own heart. Are you grumbling and complaining? Are you grumbling and complaining? If you are, ask for forgiveness. And say, God, don't count me out. (laughs) Number four. When God counts you in, he'll make your election sure. 1 Samuel chapter 13, verse 16, verse 13 says, 12b and 13, it says, Then the Lord said, Rise, anoint him, this is the one. So Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the presence of his brothers. And from that day on, the spirit of the Lord came powerfully upon David. Samuel then went to Ramah. It was evident to all including David's family, that David was the anointed one because the spirit of the Lord came upon him. And we know when the spirit of the Lord comes upon there, ain't no stopping him now in the name of Jesus. And when the anointing comes upon us, it's going to be evident to our family and to our enemies that God has called us. You don't have to politic for any position. You just have to submit to God. You don't have to buy any favors. You don't have to kiss nobody's hind parts to get what God has for you. Promotion doesn't come from the east or west or the south. Promotion comes from God. Come on and put your hands together and give God the praise. Our dependency is on God. It's not on man. Now, there's a warning, number five. When God counts you in, when he gives you that promotion, when he gives you that spouse, when he gives you that big financial blessing, God says, when I count you in, don't count him out. Don't count me out means that God, the God in me decides in the will of my soul to stand on the promises of God and to follow the direction of the Holy Spirit who empowers me and empowers you to succeed by his spirit. Philippians chapter 2 verse 13 in the Amplified Version it says, It is not for your strength, but it is God who effectively is at work in you, both to will and to work. That is strengthening, energizing, and creating in you a longing and the ability to fulfill your purpose for his good pleasure. We can't count God out. We can't operate the way King Saul did. Because promotion is here. Promotion is coming. But God wants to make sure that you don't count him out. Get the job. Get the spouse. Get the money. Get the car. Get the house. And then stop coming to church. 
Stop serving. Stop praying. Stop seeking his face. Stop developing and carving out that personal time for him. Many times when we're going through the storms of life, when we're going through the valley of the vast shadow of death, when we're going through sickness in our body, when we're having trouble in our marriage, when we're having trouble with our children, when we're having trouble on the job, when we don't have no job, we're going before the Lord and we're spending quality time with the Lord. But God is saying, don't use me to get the blessing. When God counts you him, don't count him out because he is the blesser that has released the blessing in your life. And he doesn't want you to get it twisted. He doesn't want me to get it twisted. Don't count me out. Come on, let's put our hands together and give Jesus praise. Don't count me out means that I count on God alone to succeed. Don't want you bowing down to man. Bow down to the true and the living God. By God's grace and by God's spirit, the God in me, and count is the acronym, number one, we stay connected to God. John chapter 15, verse 5 says, I'm the vine, you're the branches. The one who remains in me and I in him bears much fruit. For otherwise, apart from me, that is cut off from vital union with me. You can do absolutely nothing. Stay connected to the vine. What, what, what short circuits our connection with God? Iniquity of sin. That pride, that rebellion, that idolatry, that doubt, that unforgiveness, that fear, that doubt, that unbelief. It short circuits our connection with God. So is God, in our vital union with God, is God shows us iniquity of sin in our heart. Quickly repent. Lord, I'm sorry. Help me to do better. Help me to do what you've called me to do. First John 1 and 9 says, if you confess your sins, he who is faithful and just will forgive your sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Glory to God. Romans 8 and 1. For there is no condemnation in Christ Jesus. Those that walk after the spirit and not the flesh. There is forgiveness when there's repentance. Come on, let's put our hands together and give Jesus praise. Number two, by God's grace and by God's spirit, the God in me is obedient to God. Acts chapter 5, verse 29, Peter and the other apostles gathered, we ought to obey God rather than men. Obey God when the times are challenging. Obey God when nobody else is standing up for righteousness. Obey God when everybody in the office is cheating and lying. Obey God when it is difficult in the name of Jesus the Christ. That's how we count God in, in the mighty name of Jesus. Don't hold on to something so tight that you allow a spirit of rebellion to operate in. And sometimes we don't stand up for God when we should open up our mouths. And God said, I need for you to be obedient to me. Uh, John uh, 15 and 13, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. Come on and put your hands together and give Jesus praise. <laughs> don't count me out. <laughs> Because we count on God to succeed. Number three, we understand God's word daily. Psalm chapter 1, verses 2 and 3, But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law he meditates day and night. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf shall not wither. Whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. That reading of God's word is a daily reading. Just the way you take a bath every day, we hope. <laughs> and put on new underwear every day, we hope. We have to bathe in God's word so that he can show us those icky places, those places that need to be scrubbed, and so that we're spending more time in the inward more than the outward in Jesus name glory to God and number four we necessitate prayer times with God throughout the day how many of us are praying daily how many of us are praying several times a day the word of God says first Thessalonians chapter 5 verse 17 pray without ceasing hallelujah Ask God and continue to ask God. He'll keep you out of the pitfalls of life in Jesus' name. And then number five, testify about God. 
Psalm 107, 1 through 2 in the message version says, Oh, thank God. He's so good. His love never runs out. All of you set free by God, tell the world in the mighty name of Jesus. Don't count me out. And you don't count me out because the God in me is great. God wants to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all you can ask, think, or imagine. There's no limit to what God can do, but there are limitations about what we can do and what we can't do. God can do exceedingly, abundantly, not only in your personal lives, but here at Tacoma Park Baptist Church, as you yield to him, as you pray, as you seek his face and seek his guidance on how to evangelize and how to reach people on this Aspen Street corridor that don't look like you, that don't look like like me. There is exceedingly abundantly that God wants to do in and through this ministry. The ministry is still standing. The men lights are still on. Hallelujah. The musicians are playing. The word is going forth. Don't put God in a box. Don't give up on God because he hasn't given up on you. He hasn't given up on Tacoma Park Baptist Church. Come on. Don't count me out. Put your heads together and put, give Jesus Christ the praise. Hallelujah. Glory to God. We're looking at you today. Whoever counted you out can't count. Whoever counted you out can't count in the name of Jesus because they don't know that God is in you. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. If God be for us, who can be against us? Joseph was thrown in a pit. He was sold into slavery. He was falsely accused. He was thrown in that prison. And they counted him out. His brothers counted him out. But God raised him up. And God counted him in. He was promoted to second in command. Hallelujah. And all of Egypt. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They were thrown in the fiery furnace because they refused to bow down to King Nebuchadnezzar idol. But God, they counted them out. They said, oh, they're going into a fiery furnace. But God counted them in and sent them an angel. Hallelujah. And delivered them in the mighty name of Jesus. Daniel was thrown in a lion's den. He he continued to pray three times a day when they there was a rule there was a mandate you can't pray to any other god or about but the king hallelujah but daniel continued to pray in the name of jesus he was thrown into the lion's den but god shut the mouths of the lions and god counted him in and delivered him out in the mighty name of Jesus. God wants you to know this morning that don't count him out. And don't allow other people to count you out. Know what the word of God says. Know the power of God. Know the word of God. Know that you're a royal priesthood. That you're a chosen generation. That you're fearfully and wonderfully made. That the God in you can walk on the water. The God in you can part the Red Sea. The God in you can make the blind see. The God in you can raise the Lazarus of the dead. Don't count him out. Jesus was counted out. They lied on him. They cheated on him. They strip him. They beat him. Jesus got up and we can get up too. Jesus got up in the mighty name of Jesus. They thought it was the end. That he was dead. He was thrown in the grave. But on the third day, he rose again. Hallelujah. Jesus got up so we can get up. We can get up in the mighty name of Jesus. That same resurrection power that got Jesus up off the cross, that raised from the dead, it lives in us. We have that resurrection power, power, resurrection power. Jesus, don't count me out. Hallelujah. Don't count to come apart Baptist Church out in the name of Jesus. Obey God. Yield to his spirit. He wants to do great and mighty works in and through you, his people. Don't count me out. Let's say it. Don't count me out. One more time. Don't count me out. One more time. Don't count me out. In the name of Jesus. Come on, let's stand to our feet and give God the praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Victorious 
in the name of Jesus. Don't count me out in Jesus' name. Please remain standing. There may be someone here today that has not received Jesus Christ as their personal Lord and Savior. You don't, can't have that resurrection power without having a personal relationship with Jesus. You can't navigate through the storms of life without Jesus. So is there someone here that would like to give their lives to Jesus Christ or rededicate their lives to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ? The doors of a church are open in the mighty name of Jesus. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you're in a backslidden state, come forth. We'd like to pray for you and pray with you in the name of Jesus. Don't allow a spirit of pride or shame prohibit you from fulfilling and fulfilling and succeeding in all that God has called you to do. The doors of a church are open in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Amen. Come on, let's put our hands together and give Jesus praise. Hallelujah. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you in the name of Jesus, Lord God. We just thank you for your word on this morning, Lord God. Your word, Lord God, that breathes life, Lord God. Your word, Lord God, that encourages us, Lord God, and empowers us, Lord God, to hang on to your unchanging hand. Lord God, we pray, Lord God, and that we ask for forgiveness, Lord God. We ask for forgiveness, Lord God, any time that our dependency was on people and not on you, Lord God. Any time, Lord God, that we operated outside of your will, Lord God, and your plan and purpose for our life, Lord God. We pray, Lord God, that you would have mercy upon us, Lord God. Forgive us, Lord God, for speaking death over ourselves, death over others death over this church, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, Lord God. We ask, Lord God, that you would empower us, Lord God, to speak the word only, Lord God, knowing, dear God, that your word does not come back void and that we will accomplish everything that you set for it to accomplish, Lord God. We plead the blood of Jesus over all that are here, Lord God, and all that will receive and hear this message, Lord God. And we're careful, God, to give you all the honor, glory, and praise. Thank you for that the victory is in Christ Jesus. We love you, Lord God, and it's in Jesus' mighty name we do we pray to the glory of God. Amen and amen. Come on, let's put our hands together and praise Jesus for his word today. In Jesus' name, amen. Let the church say amen. Don't count me out. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Let's give the Lord another um, round of applause for that wonderful message delivered by way of our sister, Reverend Yolanda Sampson. Um, thank you for that wonderful and timely word that was much needed. Um, I just wanted to make sure that uh, we worship with our tithes and offering.
at this time. And uh, as you know, there is a receptacle um, right here in front of the sanctuary and also um, outside, um, right outside the sanctuary. Um, you may give your offering in that way. Um, you may also do a one-time donation online or a recurring um, um, donation online. And so there are uh, several ways to give, but the power and the mandate to give to the Lord remains the same. Amen? And um, let us, in a sense, worship with our tithes and offering. And if you have your um, tithe or you can just symbolically raise your hand as we pray over the offering that we're about to receive. Gracious Almighty God, we just thank you for blessing us. And you have filled us with your word, Lord. You have provided for us, Lord. You are Jehovah Jireh. And Lord, we are dependent upon you for even our very breath. And Lord, out of this blessing, Lord, our response is this offering, Lord. And we just ask, Lord, that this offering that we give to you individually and corporately is acceptable in your sight. And that we are able to be great stewards, Lord, of not only what you have given us and that we are able to give the 10%, but Lord, also that recognizing that the 9% is also yours. For everything we have is yours, Lord. And Lord, please expect accept this offering of thanksgiving for the many things that you have provided for us in our life. We ask all of these blessings in the precious and matchless name of Jesus Christ. Amen. All right. Most of the, the announcements have been um, highlighted uh, earlier in the service. I'd just like to, at this time, ask you to continuously pray um, for our first family. This is a um, wonderful um, time to really, really pray and um, show our appreciation for them by uh, praying because, as we know, how many of you know that uh, to shepherd a church is not an easy job? Amen. And so we want to make sure that uh, we send all the covering, the prayer coverage we need in order to uh, really, really bless the pastor and first lady and his um, entire family. Amen. And um, please, I just ask that you read the announcements in your um, um, that are printed in your bulletin. Keep in mind those people that we prayed for. Them. Let's not just pray for them on Sunday, but continue to pray through for them throughout the week. Um, so um, they can feel the presence of the Lord wherever they are, whether it's in a nursing home or whether it's someplace else where they may feel forgotten about. Um, at this time, we're going to ask you to stand, and I'll be ready to give the benediction. Let us pray. God has spoken. Let the church say amen. amen. And grace almighty God, we just ask you as the Prince of Peace, the God of Peace, rest, rule, and abide in all of us. And may you, Lord, grant us that peace that passes all understanding in the precious and matchless name of Jesus Christ. Amen. amen.